Welcome to Australian Earth Science Education. In this experiment, we are going to model three types of fossilization. The first is carbonization. This is a common way for leaves to fossilize. The second is actual remains. This is what happens when an organism is buried in sediment. The third is molds. This is how an impression of an organism or footprint becomes fossilized. For carbonization, we are going to do field work. Take a walk in your neighborhood and look for new or light colored concrete. Overhanging trees make it more likely that a leaf will have fallen onto the concrete. The day after rain falls, you're more likely to find the leaf prints that we are looking for. Let's see if we can find any. This driveway has some light colored concrete under a liquid amber tree. We can see some leaf prints left behind on the pavement. These prints are residue of chemicals in the leaf. In real carbonization, the leaf is buried in sediment and the carbon residue remains as a fossil. Our next model is the preservation of actual remains in sediment. This is a classic body fossil. You will need a microwave safe plastic bowl, chocolate melts, some fossils to add in such as Smarties, coconut, chocolate drops, and marshmallows, patty cake papers, a spoon, a takeaway container, and a microwave. Melting the chocolate in the microwave is easy, but you must do it slowly and stir frequently. Microwave the chocolate on high power for 20 seconds at first. After the first time, you will just microwave for 10 seconds at a time, stirring every 10 seconds. You want the chocolate to just melt, but not be too hot. Place the patty cake papers in the takeaway container. We will make different layers or strata in our model. In one, I have added coconut. In the other, I'm starting with the chocolate. Chocolate represents the sediments, and the other ingredients represent different types of fossils. Both of these models have Smarties in the top layer. Let the chocolate harden at room temperature, or speed things up by putting it into the refrigerator. If your chocolate is only just melted, it should harden in 15 minutes in the fridge. Remove the chocolate from the refrigerator and look at the results. Do you see any fossils exposed in the sediment? I'm using a knife to cut the fossil for demonstration, but you can take a bite and just examine the cross-section that way. Do you see layers in your model? Are some of your fossils incomplete because parts were lost because you ate them? Our third model is that of molds. You will need a baking sheet, bowl, plain flour, salt, water, measuring cups, a spatula, items to use as your fossils, and an oven. I used a half cup of flour and a quarter cup of salt. You want two parts flour to one part salt. Add enough water to form a dough that is not sticky and is easy to mold. If it feels sticky, add more flour. Make balls of dough and flatten these on a baking sheet. Press your items into the dough and carefully remove them. I'm using an ammonite shell, a fossil shark tooth, and one of my favorite dinosaurs. You might also gently make an impression of a pet's foot. Make sure they're happy to cooperate. Don't force them. Bake the fossils at 90 to 100 degrees for about two hours or until they're dry. Ask an adult for help with the hot oven. You can also let the fossils dry in a warm place if you prefer not to bake them. Remove the fossils from the oven and allow them to cool before handling them. You may wish to paint your fossils. This makes it easier to see details. You will need the fossils, a small bowl, watercolor paint or food coloring, a paintbrush, and some water. Mix a little bit of paint with a small amount of water and use this to paint your fossils. I'm not particularly neat, but you can make this as realistic as you want to. Let's look at the results and compare our molds to the original items. You can see that the originals still fit nicely into the mold. Fossilization does not preserve every feature of an organism. What is preserved in each of our models and in real fossils? In this well-preserved Japanese beech leaf, we can see the midrib, the leaf veins, and the overall shape. In the leaf we found during our fieldwork, we can see the midrib and the overall shape. Here we see the print, the original leaf, and some carbonized fossils. The real fossils are in very fine sediments, but the driveway is very grainy. This leads to less detail being preserved. Next, we will look at actual remains. This fossil shark tooth has the original three-dimensional shape. It is covered in shiny tooth enamel 
and it still has a sharp edge. Teeth are very tough and are frequently fossilized. In our model, we can still see the tough outer coating of the Smarties. The overall shapes are preserved. We also have the sediment, which is the chocolate in the model. Sediments can tell us about the environment where an organism lived. The backbone in the lower photograph is in limestone sediments. This animal fell into a mineral-rich freshwater pool when it died. Finally, we will look at molds. The body segments of this trilobite have been preserved. We can also see the smooth texture of the segments. In our ammonite mold, the spiral shape is clearly preserved. We can also see the ridged texture of the shell. Although they preserve some features, molds don't show us what the whole organism looked like.